Glorious devotees, thank you for viewing this presentation on Sri Madhurya Kadamani, The Monsoon Clouds of Sweetness, written by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Today we enter into the second shower of nectar and we'll begin with uh, the birth of the Bhakti Creeper. In our last presentation, we discussed the various stages of bhakti as presented in the Srimad Bhagavatam by Sutta Goswami in the commentary of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur there as presented by Sri Narada Muni and also as presented by Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Now that we know what the stages of bhakti are, let's go a little deeper into those stages by reviewing the vo devotional activities that comprise these, these various stages of devotional practice. So the first shower of nectar, centered on the super excellence of devotion, pointing out the, the amazing nature of the Gaudiya tradition, and this second shower of nectar, uh, we enter more into the details, beginning with the stage of Shraddha through the stage of Anista Bhajana Kriya. To put this in perspective, let us look to a verse given by Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, wherein he points out that the the unique characteristics of bhakti are its ability to destroy suffering, its bestowal of auspiciousness, its disregard for liberation, its rarity of attainment, its manifestation of concentrated bliss, and its ability to attract Krishna. The acharyas have basically placed the different stages of devotional practice into three general categories, devotional service and practice, devotional service and ecstasy, and devotional service in pure love of God. Each of these stages corresponds with Srila Rupa Goswami's verse in that these various unique characteristics of bhakti are dealt with as one progresses through these stages of practice, ecstasy, and pure love. So in the first stage, we see that there is this ability to destroy suffering and the bestowal of, of auspiciousness. In the second stage, devotional service and ecstasy, there is a disregard for liberation on the part of the practitioner and a rarity of such attainment. And in the third stage, there is a manifestation of concentrated bliss in relationship with the Supreme Lord and its ability, this pure love, praying, has the ability to attract Krishna. The Sanskrit terms for these three stages, sadhana bhakti, Baba Bhakti and Prem Bhakti. And the Sanskrit terms for the characteristics of Bhakti of these three stages, Klaishagni and Subhada under Sadhana Bhakti, Baba Bhakti, Moksa Laguta Krit, Sadurlaba, and Prem Bhakti, Sandrananda Vise Satma, Sri Krishna Karsini and the different stages of these categories are in devotional service and practice or sadhana bhakti we see shraddha sadhu sangha bhajana kriya anartha nivriti nista ruchi and asakti bhava bhakti is bhava and in prem bhakti prem Vishwanath writes in his Madhurya Kandamani, the wish-yielding creeper of pure bhakti, 
unmixed with karma or gyan, then takes root in the field of the heart, becoming the refuge of the devotee who firmly vows never to seek any fruit except bhakti, and who, like a bee, is obsessed with the desire to taste nectar. The nourishment and life of this creeper is a favorable attitude toward the Lord. Like a touchstone, Bhakti's very presence makes the functions of the heart lose their iron-like material qualities and acquire spiritual qualities like that of pure gold. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Rupa Goswami regarding the manifestation of bhakti or the entrance of bhakti into the field of the heart as follows Brahmanda, Brahmati, Konya, Bhagyavan, Jiva, Guru Krishna, Prasadi, Paya, Bhakti, Lata, Bij. According to their karma, all living entities are wandering throughout the entire universe. Some of them are being elevated to the upper planetary systems and some are going down into the lower planetary systems. Out of many millions of wandering living entities, one who is very fortunate gets an opportunity to associate with a bona fide spiritual master by the grace of Krishna. By the mercy of both Krishna and the spiritual master, such a person receives the seed of the creeper of devotional service. First, we need to see how bhakti enters into the life of the sadhika and the planting of this bhakti lata bij, or the seed of the creeper of devotion. Although Sriman Mahabrabhu here mentions the seed of the vine of devotion, he doesn't specify exactly what that seed is. However, Srila Jiva Goswami, in his Lagu Tosani commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam, points out that through the association of sadhus, the intention or desire to engage in Krishna Bhajan awakens. This intention is called Mati and is the seed of Bhakti, the wish fulfilling creeper or Kapalata. Once the seed is planted through the association of the sadhu, it takes root and it is nourished. The seed, when planted in the field of the devotee's senses and watered with devotional practices, sprouts and becomes the creeper of devotion. Its roots are favorable service to the Lord. In other words, Bhakti's very life force is the giving of pleasure to Sri Krishna. Jiva Goswami writes in his Priti Sandarbha, Priyata is taken to mean a state of consciousness that is made up of a favorable attitude towards its object, and which is made particularly joyful due to the hope of attaining this object, as well as for experiencing it. Priyata or Bhagavat Priti's three elements are actions seeking to please Krishna, wishing for Krishna's association, and experiencing the Lord's sweetness. So how are we first affected by this initial contact with devotional service. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur continues, Bhakti's very presence makes the functions of the heart lose their iron-like material qualities and acquire spiritual qualities like that of pure gold. At the stage of sadhana bhakti, the material senses are gradually spiritualized. At the stage of bhava bhakti, the internal senses, mind, intelligence, and subconscious all become fully spiritual 
and at the stage of praying, the gross material body itself becomes entirely spiritual. Sanatan Goswami writes in this regard, Having entirely forgotten their bodies and their bodily affairs by drinking the nectar of devotion to Krishna, the devotees' material bodies are converted into spiritual ones. Mahaprabhu instructs, The material body of a devotee is never material. It is transcendental, full of spiritual bliss. When a devotee surrenders to the spiritual master at the time of taking initiation, Krishna makes him equal to himself. He transforms the devotee's body into spiritual substance so that the devotee can worship him with spiritualized senses. Vishwanath continues in his Madhurya Kandamani. Gradually, the Sadna Bhakti creeper sprouts and unfolds two leaves. The first leaf is called Kleshagni, the dissolution of suffering, and the second is called Subhada, the attainment of all auspiciousness. The inner surface of the two leaves is the domain of the king called Rag, spontaneous devotion, and is very smooth, the sign of its being born out of spontaneous greed. It is superior due to the pure affectionate relation with the Lord as described in the Bhagavat. I am their dear one, very life, son. The other surface of the leaves is ruled by another king known as Vaidhi, regulative devotion and slightly rough in nature, the sign of its being born from the injunctions of the scriptures. It is somewhat inferior and slightly rough due to the lack of pure affectionate relation with the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam says, therefore persons desiring fearlessness should worship the Lord, the super soul. However, both Rag and Vaidhi almost equally manifest the symptoms of Kleshagni and Subhada. So these first two leaves, born of the Bhakti creeper, first exhibit these two specific characteristics of the beginning stage of devotional practice, Kleshagni, the destruction of distress, and Subhada, the bestowing of auspiciousness. It's important for us, however, as Gaudias, to understand that truly the beginning practitioner's utilization of the injunctions of scripture that fall under the jurisdiction of Vaidhi practice need to be looked at as Ajata Ruchi Raganuga practices. In the Gaudiya Math of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami, there is inscribed on the altar the following Pujala Raga Pantha Gaurava Bhange. Even if one has not yet entered into a deep emotional relationship with the Supreme Lord in his eternal residence, Raj Dham, still we worship that ideal as Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And if we chant without offense, that ideal will be revealed in the heart in due course of time. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was of the opinion that Ajata Rucha Raganuga Sadhikas, practitioners without taste, should adopt the methods of Raganuga Sadhana that they are qualified to adopt in proportion to their development of sacred greed, while following the Unga's limbs of Vaidhi Bhakti, regulative devotion. So it's important that we understand the distinction that in essence, even if we have yet to attain the stage of an emotional relationship with the Supreme Lord, our objective is to attain 
Raganuga, and therefore our initial practice is Raganuga Bhakti, but a Raganuga where taste is yet to develop, or a Jata Ruchi Raganuga Bhakti. Sujiva Goswami writes in his Bhakti Sandarbha regarding a Jata Ruchi Raganuga Bhakti. One in whom this taste, Ruchi, has not yet arisen, but who has come to appreciate Raganuga Bhakti only on account of appreciation for a particular saint or scripture, may still practice Raganuga Bhakti, but with an admixture of Vaidhi Bhakti. In the same way, for the sake of preaching, one who is advanced and in whom taste has manifested should also practice Raganuga with an admixture of Vaidhi. Such mixing of the two kinds of bhakti means that one practices Vaidhi bhakti by uniting it with whatever Raganuga practices one is capable of. The important point here is to understand that Gaudiya Vaishnava's ideal is that of Raganuga bhakti and that we do not truly aspire to the goals of those who practice Vaidhi Bhakti, which is the attainment of Vaikuntha. Our Prayojan, our attainment, very much depends on our Abhideya, or our practice. And our practice is Raganuga Bhakti. In the Bhakti Rasamrita, it's said, Rag means spontaneous, natural, and intense absorption in the Lord. Bhakti enriched with this kind of rag is known as Ragatmika Bhakti. This is manifested and expressed by the eternal associates of Raj. Bhakti following their footsteps is known as Raganuga Bhakti. Krishna Das Kavi Raj writes, in his Chaitanya Charitamrita, the passionate devotion known as Ragatmika Bhakti is found principally amongst the residents of Vrindavan. The devotional practice that follows this kind of devotion is called Raganuga Bhakti. Shiji Rav Swami writes, Raga means a taste for engaging in bhajan with attachment. And Vishwanatha adds, Rag means the hankering, loba, for doing bhajan that results either from seeing the deity of the Lord or from hearing his sweet pastimes as described in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada writes, in his commentary to the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, this attraction is called spontaneous attraction. Technically, it is called Swarup Upalabdi. This stage is not achieved in the beginning. In the beginning, one has to render service strictly according to the regulative principles set forth by the revealed scriptures and the spiritual master. By continuously rendering service through the process of Vaidhi Bhakti, One's natural inclination is gradually awakened. That is called spontaneous attraction or Raganuga Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti, on the other hand, has a different objective. When one is prompted to engage in the practice of devotion by the injunctions of Shastra rather than spontaneous attraction, it is known as Vidhi Bhakti. Examples from the Srimad Bhagavatam. O descendant of King Bharat, anyone desiring to be freed from birth and death, from all kinds of hellish suffering arising from absorption in bodily consciousness, and wishing to experience paramount bliss, must hear, chant, and remember the glories of the Lord, the Super Soul, the Controller, and the Destroyer of all miseries. So, as we can see from this verse, there is some desire on the part of the practitioner for his personal pleasure in his relationship with the Supreme. Whereas the Raganuga Bhakta 
aspires for a selflessness in his service to the Supreme, wherein his only desire is Krishna's pleasure. Sri Kapila tells his mother Devahuti, I am their beloved, their very soul, son, friend, preceptor, well-wisher, or worshipable Lord. So these terms, Priya, Sutta, Saka, all relate a relationship with the Lord in divine prame, wherein one is serving the Lord selflessly as their lover, as their son, or as their intimate friend. So much so that knowledge of the Lord's supremacy or his being God fades into the background. That is Vraj Bhakti. I want to sincerely thank you for taking your valuable time to view this presentation on Sri Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's Badoria Kadamani. And I hope that you will return to other presentations and that they nourish your spiritual understanding and growth. Hare Krishna.